Hello and welcome to the Comlex and USMLE Instant Review. Let's talk about some of the immunizations that are high yield for the board exam. Let's start our topic today with measles. With measles, keep in mind that when a child is zero to six months, um, the management post-exposure is really to do nothing unless if the mother is not immune. Between 6 to 12 months, IgG plus vaccine should be given. And, be and if the child is greater than 12 months, then vaccine only within the 72 hours of exposure is necessary. And if the um, patient is immunocompromised, then IgG should be given. So let's review that one more time. For active immunization after disease exposure in the case of measles, if the age is between 0 to 6 months, then you do nothing. If it's 6 to 12 months um, for the child, then you give IgG plus the vaccine. And if the child is greater than 12 months of age, then you give the vaccine only within 72 hours of exposure. And if the child is immunocompromised, then IgG alone should be given. It's a little complicated to understand. But the way to remember this is as the age increases, you want to give the vaccine quicker. In other words, within the time limit of 72 hours. Between 6 to 12 months, IgG plus vaccine should be given. Um, and if it's less than 6 months of age for the child, then do nothing. Now, what about varicella? Well, you want to give the vaccine and the VZIG to susceptible immunocompromised children as soon as possible. So the key point to remember is that a newborn whose mother had the onset of chickenpox within five days before the delivery to 48 hours after the delivery should get the VZIG. And that's a very important point. Five days before and 48 hours after the delivery is your timeline to give VZIG. And what about hepatitis B? Well, after exposure in a patient who doesn't have any immunocompromise, uh, you should give the hepatitis B IgG plus the vaccine and you repeat it in one and at six months. So hepatitis B in a person who has post exposure should get both the vaccine plus the hepatitis B IgG and you repeat it in one and six months. Now what about hepatitis A? In this case, also, you want to give IgG plus the vaccine, both. Now, mumps and rubella. So, for mumps and rubella, patients are not protected by the post-exposure administration of the live vaccine. So, you know, that's one of the recommendations that exposed adults who were born in the U.S., after 1957, um, who have not had previously immunized, may be recommended to get the live vaccine, but in other cases it's not really recommended. So just to review, active immunizations after disease exposure. Measles has a specific guideline where if it's after six months, then you should give IgG plus the vaccine. So you give both. If it's greater than 12 months of age for the child, then, so the duration is important. If the duration is greater than 12 months, then the child should get the vaccine only within 72 hours. You don't need to give the IgG. If the child is immunocompromised, then you give IgG only. For varicella, you make sure that all immunocompromised children get the VZIG plus the vaccine. Also, if 
the mother had delivery and had exposure to chicken pox five days before and 48 hours after delivery either or then you give VZIG to the mom and with hepatitis you would give both the vaccine and the hepatitis IgG for hepatitis A and B and in case of hepatitis B you should repeat the dosage in one and six months now mumps and rubella don't necessarily require a live vaccine after exposure because it may not help well, let's talk about specific vaccines I want to talk about hepatitis B with hepatitis B the first dose is given after birth before the patient is discharged from the hospital and with a total of three doses by 18 months of age if the mom is hep, um, hepatitis B antigen negative so three doses before 18 months of age now if the mom is hepatitis B surface antigen positive then you should receive you should give the infant the first dose plus the IgG at two different sites within 12 hours of birth and all three doses should be given within six months and that's a key point here because what you want to focus on is the time and the hepatitis B surface antigen so for hepatitis B surface antigen negative and for hepatitis B surface antigen positive there are different requirements to see when the child should get the vaccine if it's if the mom is hepatitis B surface antigen positive then the infant should get both the hepatitis B IgG plus the hepatitis B virus vaccine at two different sites within 12 hours um, and the three doses within six months so if the mom is hepatitis B surface antigen negative then the three doses are given before 18 months and you don't need to give the hepatitis B IgG in addition all children who haven't been immunized should get hepatitis B uh, vaccines the three dosages finally I want to talk about DTaP with DTaP all the DTaP vaccines for um, the manufacturers come with pertussis toxoid and you need to give a total of five doses before school starts and the final is given at preschool age uh, that's approximately four to six years so five doses before school starts and also the pertussis booster vaccine is now recommended in adolescence regardless of the immunization status so you have to give the patient pertussis booster vaccine the TD is given at 11 to 12 years of age and then every 10 out 10 years so the TD is given at 11 to 12 years of age um, and the pertussis booster is recommended during adolescence that was a complex and USMLE board review part one of certain high-yield vaccination topics you may want to be aware of for the board exam and for medical school. Good luck in your preparation for the boards and please visit www.comlexflashcards.com and good luck in your preparations.